In this lecture, we're going to apply the equilibrium analysis we learned from last lecture to population dynamics. So uh, we're going to let P of T be a population. And um, there are several models that we can use to study a population. Uh, the simplest possible model would be um, no constraints whatsoever. Okay. And so in this model, we just say that the population grows at a rate proportional to the current population size. So I just set a differential equation in words and I, I wrote it down. So um, this is like we saw in the first lecture. Um, and, and the solution to this differential equation, as we've studied, um, is, uh, is a e to the kt. Okay. Here k is a positive constant. Okay, um, so in particular, uh, we see that no matter what our starting population is, um, as long as it's um, a positive number, which is, I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense for a population anyway, um, this is going to increase exponentially without bound. So let me just sketch really quickly uh, what these solutions are going to look like. Okay, so t and p of t, and um, our populations are increasing exponentially. We have one like that, and we can also see this from the perspective of equilibrium analysis. That's because the only equilibrium here, the only equilibrium solution, is the constant solution p equals zero. All right. Remember, we find equilibrium solutions, we, we set dp dt equal to zero, and then we find that p equals zero is an equilibrium solution. And um, in this case, it's an unstable equilibrium, because if we start above it, then dp dt is going to be positive, right? And so we're actually going away from the equilibrium. And, you know, if we start below it, dp dt will be negative, um, but we don't really consider negative population. Um, okay, so that's the simplest possible model. So now I'd like to introduce a slightly more complicated and slightly more accurate model, because uh, in real life, uh, populations don't just increase without bound, right? They're limited by some, uh, some carrying capacity. Um, so, so let's now think about what if we have a carrying capacity? Carrying capacity. You might have seen this concept before. Think of uh, the carrying capacity is just the maximum, um, the maximum population size that can be supported. Okay, maybe there's competition for resources or something like that. And so there's a maximum population size. Um, okay, and um, before I write a differential equation, um, yeah. So I'm actually not going to write a differential equation. I want to just think about what the solution should look like, and then see if we can deduce a differential equation from that. Okay, so let's start with this picture of what the solution so should look like. Um, okay, well, we'll want, um, we'll want two equilibrium solutions. We want two equilibrium solutions. Um, and what are those equilib equilibrium solutions? Well, surely p equals zero should be an equilibrium solution. If the population starts at zero, it will stay at zero for all time. Um, and then the other one will be the carrying capacity. So if the population has reached a carrying capacity, it can go no further. It's stuck at that carrying capacity. So here are two equilibrium solutions that we desire. And, um, and what's going to happen in here, so if I have between 0 and n uh, people or animals or whatever population we'll, we're worried about, um, I'm actually going to be increasing until I get closer to the carrying capacity and then I level off. Okay, So something like this. 
We're going to start down here. Maybe initially I'm not growing by too much, and then I start growing by more, but I eventually hit the carrying capacity. Um, okay, so in particular, we want uh, we want these solutions to be increasing between 0 and n. And what if we start with more than n? Well, then the population will decline, again, until it reaches that carrying capacity. So I want the population to decline if we somehow start out with more than the carrying capacity. Um, OK, great. So this is what we would like uh, the solutions of our differential equation to, write, uh, to look like. Um, so now I'm going to try to write a differential equation that basically um, has this kind of behavior. So dp dt is going to equal, remember I want the equilibrium solutions to be 0 and n. So I'm going to just try to write down the simplest possible differential equation that has those two equilibrium solutions. Um, so I, I want a p there, because uh, I want 0 to be an equilibrium solution. And then I want, um, so I don't want to write n minus p or p minus n. I just need to figure out which one I should do. And we want this to be a stable equilibrium solution. Right? So if we start out with less than n, we actually want, we actually want dp dt to be positive. Right? So I should do, um, yeah, what should I do? Maybe pause the video and think about it uh, if you're a little unsure. Should I do p minus n or n minus p? OK, uh, so I think I should do n minus p. But let's try to reason through that. Um, OK, so if I'm between 0 and n, then n minus p is going to be, uh, is going to be positive, which is what I want. If, uh, if my population starts above n, then this will be negative. Right? And this will still be positive, And then positive times a negative is a negative. So p of t will be decreasing. Right? dp t, d, dt will be negative. p of t will be decreasing. Again, what I want. So, um, so this is the differential equation I'll go with. And um, we've just sort of discovered um, a really important differential equation. Um, this one has a, has a name. It's called the logistic uh, differential equation. So this is the logistic differential equation. Differential equation. Um, and logistic differential equations has tons of applications, um, but uh, one important one is to population dynamics. It can model population growth with a carrying capacity. And so um, what I'd like to do now is, um, this is something we should all do once in our lives and then maybe not do again, um, but I want to solve um, I want to solve a, a, log a logistic differential equation explicitly. So let's do an example problem. Um, okay. So maybe we'll do population growth. Um, so let's, um, yeah, let's do, uh, so let's suppose, um, let's suppose the uh, buffalo population in uh, Yellowstone National Park I just visited Yellowstone recently, so that's why I'm using it for the problem. Um, is modeled by a uh, following differential equation. So it's modeled by the differential equation. Um, okay, so let's do dy dt. So y will be the um, y will be the buffalo population, and time is in years. So dy dt is going to be um, 1 over 100 times y times 1 minus y over 5,000. Okay. And um, I want to ask two questions. So first of all, um, if, if the initial population is 1,000, Let's uh, let's find uh, let's actually find an explicit function y of t that the population satisfies. 
So this is more than just equilibrium analysis. We actually want to find the explicit, um, the explicit function here. And then also, I just want to ask, um, what is, what is the limit as t goes to infinity? So a long time in the future, how many buffalo will there be? Okay. Um, so it turns out uh, the second question is easier than the first. That's because we can use equilibrium analysis. And so this, uh, I mean, this, this doesn't look exactly like that logistic equation I wrote down. I, I intentionally changed it a little bit. Um, but this is another common form where we have one minus y over uh, a number here. Um, and that number turns out to be the carrying capacity. Well, why is that? Um, well, what are our equilibrium solutions? What are our equilibrium solutions? Y equals zero is an equilibrium. And then the other one is, well, it's whatever Y value will make this zero, which is 5,000. Okay, so we have 5,000 and we have uh, zero. Okay. Um, yeah, and what's going on in between here? Right? If y is between 0 and 5,000, I have 1 minus a number that's smaller than 1. So, so I'll be positive. Right? And y is positive, so dy dt will be positive, so y of t will be increasing, just like we did last lecture. Similarly, you can find that we'll be decreasing up here. Um, okay, and then we can draw on a few solution curves. I'll be approaching this equilibrium. This looks like it's going to be a stable equilibrium here. So it's just like this picture we had up here. Um, okay. And so if y of zero equals a thousand, well, that's within this region. So it doesn't matter what number I said there. Um, as long as it's between zero and 5,000, this limit is going to be, um, so let's just say this is going to equal um, 5,000. So that'll be 5,000. In fact, I could have even said 6,000 there. If y of zero is 6,000, the limit will still be 5,000, right? Because solutions that start above 5,000 will decrease. Um, okay. So that second one was actually the easy part. Let's do the first part. Let's actually try to find this explicit function. And uh, this is actually something you often want to do in these problems. Um, because you, often you want to estimate the population like one year in the future, two years in the future, things like this. And so we need, we, we really need the explicit formula in order to do that. Um, okay, well, how do we solve this differential equation? We know two methods, right, for explicitly solving them, uh, separation of variables and integrating factors. So this is actually not a linear equation. And that's because we're actually gonna get a y squared term here. Uh, we can't have a y squared term in a linear equation. Right? We can only have a y term. Uh, but this is separable uh, because it doesn't involve t. It's autonomous, in other words. So we're going to separate vari uh, separate uh, variables. Okay. How do I separate variables? Um, hopefully you're, you're a bit more used to this uh, by now, what, what I should do. You know, it looks weird, but I'm gonna I'm gonna divide this entire equation by uh, I'm gonna divide the equation by this entire expression here. So I have a y times a one minus y over five thousand. Maybe I'll keep that one over one hundred um, over here. Okay, so I have one over one hundred dt. Okay. Then I will integrate both sides. Okay, well, how do I do this integral on the um, on the left? That's not an easy one. So um, maybe let's um, come over here. So draw a little box. Um, so this is going to be um, this going to be a partial fractions problem. Okay. So what's the idea behind partial fractions? The idea is, if I have this denominator that looks like a product, I can imagine that this came from adding two fractions and forming this as the common denominator. So in other words, maybe there's a fraction a over y plus b over one minus 
y over 5,000, okay? Or a and b are constants. Um, okay, great, but how do I find what a and b are? Well, you can just um, find a common denominator here, leave in the variables a and b, leave in those parameters there. So how do I find a common denominator? I multiply this one by that denominator, okay? I multiply this one by this denominator, so y over y. And then uh, I get as the denominator, just y times 1 minus y over 5,000. And I want that to equal 1 over y times 1 minus y over 5,000, right? That's what I want it to equal. And so that will happen um, if, yeah, 1 equals... Well, let's expand this out. So we get a minus, uh, so y is my variable, right? So I have a over 5,000 times y plus by, okay? And again, these are, so these are functions of y, right? So I want these to be equal as functions. That's the key. Because it looks like I have like only one equation and too many variables, right? But I, I want this to be the same function on both sides. So in other words, these y terms have to cancel and these constant terms have to cancel. Right? So this, these constant terms have to be the same on both sides. That just tells me that a equals one right off the bat. Okay. And then um, these terms with the y have to also cancel. So like the b has to be a over 5,000. So b has to be a over 5,000, but we know a equals one. So BSV1 over 5,000. Okay. okay, well that means uh, I can rewrite this left side as A over A over Y. Um, so let's do that. So I have one over Y. So A is one. Plus this right here, B over, uh, and B is one over 5,000 plus b over one minus y over 5,000, okay? Uh, dy, that's gonna equal this integral. Uh, we know what that integral is gonna be, but let's just write it one more time. Um, okay, so now let's actually do the integration. The whole idea behind partial fractions is to break a more complicated integral into, into maybe a few uh, more manageable integrals. We can distribute the integral over the sum so here we get the natural log of y plus, what is this one going to be? So there'll be a natural log um, of w one minus y over 5,000, but I need a negative one over 5,000 out here to cancel. Uh, but luckily I have a one over 5,000 already. So I just, I just need that negative sign out there. Okay. Um, and that's gonna equal one over 100 t plus c. Okay. Um, now it looks like it might be tough to make progress because we, we really want to find this explicit uh, function y of t um, in order to do a lot of problems. Um, but we have the y here and the y there. So how, how are we going to combine those? Um, well, the first thing we can do right off the bat is use this property of, um, of logarithms. So if we have log a minus log b, that's the same as log a over b. So that's the key here, right? So we have log of y over one minus y over 5,000, right? And now we can um, take the exponential both sides. So we have y over one minus y over 5,000 um, equals um, e to the one over 100 t times e to the c. Um, we're gonna do the same thing that we've already done um, about five times so far probably. Uh, it's a common pattern. We're gonna call e to the c a and then remove the absolute value signs because, um, let's write it again. So a is um, 
we're calling it plus or minus e to the c. Um, let's go to a new page. Almost there. Um, okay. So there are a couple more um, sort of tricky parts to this problem. Um, I would actually advise you to use our initial condition now. So because um, things are going to get a little more complicated because we're going to have to move this to the other side and then distribute. Um, but then the A will sort of end up in two places. So I, I don't want that. I, I want to just use my initial condition now. Oh, I just have one A there. So Y of zero is a thousand. So let's use that. So we have um, a thousand over one minus um, a thousand over five thousand. And that's going to equal A times something that just ends up being one. All right, so just A. Um, okay, so A is going to be, um, let's see, 1,000 over is 4 fifths, so that'll be 5 fourths times 1,000. Uh, so it should be um, 1,250. Okay. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's keep going. So we have Y over 1 minus Y over 5,000 equals... Um, this is why I said you should only really do this once. Um, it's, pre it's pretty tedious, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's good to solve the logistic equation at least once. Um, so we have, um, we put in our constant. And now how are we going to solve for y? Well, there are a couple ways. Um, but the way I'm going to do it here is I'll, mu I'll multiply by this denominator. So we get times uh, 1 minus y over 5,000. Then I'll uh, distribute it through. So we get 1250 e to 0.01t uh, minus, let's see, 1250 over 5,000, that's 1 fourth, um, e to 0.01t times y. Uh, sorry, that was not visible. Now I have uh, I have these two y's. I'm going to combine them by just adding the like terms. So I'm going to add this term to the other side. And so I get y. Over on this side, it's just 1y. Now I'm adding 1 fourth e to the 0.01t y. Okay? So I just combine these two like terms. Um, and on this side, I have 1, 2, 5, 0 times e to the 0.01t. Ah, and finally, uh, we have y equals um, 1250 e to the 0.01t um, over 1 plus 1 fourth e to the 0.01t. Okay, finally. So there's our, there's our explicit formula um, for, yeah, this actually ends up being one of these curves here. Okay. So that's an example of the logistic, uh, the logistic e differential equation. Um, as you can see, uh, it was already quite a pain to solve this one. And this isn't even as complicated as it could be. Um, so they're more complicated models. Um, and in those cases, we really don't want to solve it um, if we can avoid it. Um, so equilibrium analysis can be really important. Um, Let's just verify, by the way, like, does this give us the right limit? We can sort of check our answer that way. Um, what is the limit of, of y of t as t goes to infinity? It should give us 5,000, but do we actually get that? Um, so it's the limit of, um, okay, this is one of those situations where it's, um, it's not clear just looking at it right, what the limit is going to be. Um, or it might be clear uh, to, to, to some people watching, but um, we have a function e to 0.01t that's going to infinity and that appears actually in both the numerator and the denominator. So both the numerator and the denominator are going to infinity. So in this situation, we could apply something like L'Hopital's rule. Um, there's a simpler way. We can just, we can just uh, sort of factor out this e to the 0.01t. Okay, so, so then what do I get? I get a, um, 
I have to factor out this one also, so I actually get a e to the negative zero point zero one t. Right, it's in the denominator here, um, plus uh, a a uh, one fourth. Okay. Well, what's that limit going to be? Well, this is going to zero now. It's e to the negative um, infinity. And so I have one two five zero over a one fourth, uh, which is five thousand. So. Same answer that we expected uh, that's from the equilibrium analysis. Um, okay, great. Um, okay, so, so let me just quickly uh, mention another application. Um, and that's the uh, spread of a disease. Um, spread of a disease, maybe in a small, um, among a small population. So, um, so let's suppose a uh, town of uh, 2,000 people, uh, 2,000 people suffers an outbreak of a disease. And um, we can almost we can almost just write a differential equation down but, uh, right away by just thinking about you know how does the disease spread? It spreads um, whenever someone with the disease um, comes into contact with someone without the disease. Let's say so so um, so let's just say yeah the disease spreads whenever someone with the disease um, encounters someone without the disease. Okay. Because if two people already had a disease and they met up, then that wouldn't actually affect the total numbers of the people who had the disease. Um, so I, yeah, let's draw a little picture. So um, we'll have blue represent the uh, the um, the healthy individuals, and then red will be um, the individuals infected with the disease. Okay, and let's just kind of draw a picture to see how this might work. Okay, so maybe I'll have a few red ones in there. Um, okay. And so, you know, for this, um, let's also define a, a variable. So, so we'll say I of t is the number of infected. Number of infected people. Okay. Um, okay, so let's consider this person here um, who's infected. Well, um, how many ways can this person spread the disease to somebody, right? Well, it's the total number of the blue dots, right? Because the red person could meet this person at a store or whatever, or this person or this person. Um, and each of those would, there'd be some chance at least of spreading the disease. Um, similarly for this red person. And similarly for this red person. So, um, so because of that, um, the, to the total number of ways someone, it's like a combinatorics problem. Uh, the number of ways someone with the disease can encounter someone without the disease is just going to be the total number of red people times the total number of blue people, because each of the red people can meet with any of the blue people. And so it's going to be, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, let, let's write our differential equation. So what does DIDT mean? Lesser rate at which the disease is spreading, right? Okay, and it spreads whenever someone with the disease encounters someone without the disease. So it's proportional to the number of possible meetings of a healthy person and a diseased person, which we said was the total number of the infected people, I, times the total number of healthy people. Well, what's the total number of healthy people? 
Uh, we know how many people there are total, right? That's not changing. So it's going to be 2,000 minus i. So this is the infected times uh, healthy people. Okay. So just sort of thinking about the mechanism of, you know, how this disease spreads, we could deduce a differential equation. And I think we've seen this differential equation before. It's exactly the logistic differential equation. So that's kind of cool. It came up in a, uh, in a the unexpected way. Um, we're just yeah, looking at total number of ways a healthy person could um, come into contact with an infected person. And we uh, arrive at this differential equation. Um, okay, so I won't go further with that. I just wanted to show you that we could get a logistic equation. Um, I would like to do, however, a, um, a more complicated example um, and a very practical example, actually. Um, so this is going to be, um, we can use the logistic equation again, um, but we're going to make it more complicated. Uh, so this is going to be logistic growth um, with harvesting. So maybe we have some natural resource that we're um, harvesting at a certain rate. Um, okay. And the main tool here that we're going to use is... Um, is equilibrium analysis. So we're actually not going to be solving any differential equations explicitly, and you'll see why. They just get too complicated. Um, so let's um, let's do a, let's do a, a standard example here as a, a salmon population. So suppose a salmon population. Um, we'll just call, call that uh, Y of T. Just give it a name. Um, is uh, modeled by, and I'll give you a, um, a differential equation. So it's going to be a logistic equation to start out. Um, let's do, uh, let's do y times 1 minus y over 2,000. Okay, uh, so we already got some practice with this, so you can kind of see what's going on already, hopefully. Um, so you can see the equilibrium solutions. It's going to be 0 and 2,000. And we can see in between those equilibrium solutions, are, we're going to be increasing as dy dt is positive. Um, so yeah, it's the typical logistic growth that we have so far. So nothing new. Um, but here, here's what we're going to do. So we're actually going to... Um, give out some fishing licenses. So if we, if we, um, if we allow each salmon per year to be harvested, uh, um, if we allow each salmon per year to be harvested, well, how does that change the differential equation? Uh, becomes. Well, what does it become? Well, I'm just going to write down the same differential equation because that's how the salmon um, that's how the salmon population uh, just grows on its own. But then, in addition. You know, whatever this dy dt is, I'm taking away h more, right? So I'm decreasing this, the salmon population by h, h salmon per year. And so I have to subtract an h. That's all I have to do. And we're thinking of this h salmon per year as sort of a, um, a continuous uh, rate. So it's an instantaneous rate, in other words, because um, this is this is a continuous process. Um, Right, but this is my differential equation. And uh, you might say, well, what are the equilibrium solutions of this? It's a little more complicated because of this minus h here. Right, so we want to know when this is zero. Um, but yeah, I didn't tell you what h is yet. Um, in fact, that's going to be the problem. <laughs> so the question is, what is the optimum harvesting rate? 
Optimum harvesting rate. Okay. As much as I like, you know, saying things like this without explaining them completely, I'm gonna <laughs> try to explain what I mean by this. So, um, it's the largest value of H. So we want H to be as large as possible, but, um, so it's the largest value of H that will still allow the salmon population to sustain itself. Okay, so we don't want the salmon to go extinct or anything like that. Um, so still allow the uh, salmon to sustain themselves. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, um, solving this differential equation, not going to be a good idea. Um, and that's because, you know, that one partial fraction was bad enough. Not, we didn't even have this minus H. So um, this is going to get very complicated if you try to solve it. No, there'll, there'll actually be multiple cases depending on what H is, okay? Um, depending on, you know, the roots of this quadratic equation. Um, so, um, but we will need another tool to study this. And so this is a good time to introduce it. So a useful tool, and this is a useful tool for any kind of equilibrium analysis. Um, but what we want to look at is a plot of dy dt versus um, versus just y. So in other words, yeah, so, so let me draw what I mean. Um, let's, you know, let's say, um, let's say h is zero, first of all. We're going to look at several different values of h um, in order to solve this problem. But um, okay, so let's let me tell you what I mean. So I'm going to plot. Um, so, so this will be my y-axis, and this will be my dy/dt axis. So all I mean here is I'm just going to graph this function right here, right? dy/dt as a function of y. Um, just, you know, whatever function is on this side. So in this case, it's a quadratic equation. Its roots are 0 and 2,000. So I can plot the roots, so 0 and 2,000. Okay. Um, and so there are two kinds of parabolas, right? So there's the one that opens, uh, opens down, there's the one that opens up. This is one that's going to open down, right? Because the y squared term is negative. So this parabola is actually going to look, um, look something like this, okay? So I just graphed that function right there. Um, but this is actually telling me a lot of information. And um, just to show that, I'm going to do something that we've we've already done a few times, but um, can always get more practice. Um, I'm going to sketch some solutions. So y of t um, versus t. This is just a tool, by the way. Like this is not a solution to the differential equation or anything like that. Um, but it's actually going to tell us a lot of information about the solutions. Okay. First of all, these roots. Uh, zero and 2,000, those are going to correspond to equilibrium solutions of our differential equation, right? Just by definition of, of equilibrium solutions. There, we, we want dy dt to be zero for an equilibrium solution. And then we want to solve for y, right? That's how we, how we, how we find equilibrium solutions. So the equilibrium solutions are going to be the roots of this parabola here. So let me just sketch this. Okay, so here's zero. Ah, yeah, I drew it a little bit above, but that's okay. Um, okay, what else can we um, can we see from this plot? Well, we can actually see that when y is between zero and two thousand. So it's like if I'm going this way on this plot and this way on this plot. When y is between zero and two thousand, dy/dt is positive. Like we can just see it right here. 
So dy dt is positive. That means that y of t is increasing. And then when y is below zero or above 2000, see dy dt is negative. So I'm decreasing. So I'm gonna just sketch the whole picture here. Um, you can almost do the whole equilibrium analysis just by staring at this picture here, this plot of dy dt versus y. Um, and I'll sketch my solutions. Uh, okay, there are a few solutions. Um, okay, there's even more that this can tell us, right? It can tell us actually when, when, is, when is dy dt going to be the largest, right? That's going to be this point here. In other words, the vertex of this parabola is a parabola in this case. Well, that's telling us when y of t is growing the fastest. Right? So that's why I drew it like this, actually. You might have been wondering about that. Like, why am I drawing it going up um, steeper in the middle here? Well, that's because dy dt is the largest there, as we can see. And so it's growing the fastest you know, when y is 1,000, I guess, in this example. Um, so very useful tool, this plot of dy dt versus y. Um, we're going to use it uh, to solve this problem. Um, so let's, um, let's increase h. Let's see what happens. Okay. I'm going to draw this plot again. So I'm going to plot uh, dy dt versus y. Okay. And let me just draw in my uh, previous equilibrium solutions there. So I had 0 and 2,000. Those will no longer be equilibrium solutions. So what happens as we increase h? Right, here's h. Well, I have my quadratic equation from before. If I do minus h, what does that do graphically to this parabola? What it does is it shifts it downward, right? So this parabola is going to actually shift. Let me draw the one before, it's sort of dotted. So it looked like this. Um, but what's happening is it's actually, the whole thing is being shifted downward like this, okay, as I increase h. It's actually going down by h. Um, so my parabola shifts downward. Okay. Well, um, what is happening to the roots, right? Because we remember these roots here are going to correspond to the equilibrium solutions for my differential equation. Well, as you can see, they're sort of both being pushed inward, right? They're both moving in. So let's try to sketch a graph of the solutions, you know, just using this plot over here to help us. Okay, so here's t, here's y of t. Where are my equilibrium solutions now? Um, well, this, this one has moved up. It's no longer at zero. It's maybe up here. And then the one that was at 2000 before has moved down. All right, so maybe 2000 was up here, but it moved down. And maybe zero is down here, but this one moved up. Okay. And again, you know, just looking at this picture, we can immediately draw in what's happening uh, to, to all the other solutions. Because if we're between the equilibrium solutions, dy dt is a positive number. Right, this is positive, um, and so y of t is increasing. And then when we're above here, when we're above this line, this equilibrium solution, whatever this number is, we're decreasing. And also down here, we're decreasing. That's interesting. Um, so in between here, I'll just try to sketch in some solutions. Notice again, we're increasing fastest right in the middle. Um, there's a couple more, then maybe. So now if I start at 2000, it's no longer an equilibrium. I'm actually decreasing to that equilibrium. Uh, what if I start down here? I'm actually going to decrease, right? So I'm going to decrease. Um, okay, so what do we see from this picture? If we only have a few salmon, um, and, and, the, and this population is very small, and we increase h too much, this is what's gonna happen, right? Their numbers are gonna go down to zero eventually. So that's not a good situation. 
Um, but as long as we're in this region here, the salmon population can still sustain itself, even though we're harvesting H, H salmon per year. Okay. Um, let's keep increasing H. Okay. And, um, and let's actually figure out, um, when something interesting is going to happen. So yeah, let's just say we're, we'll increase H even further. And let's keep increasing it until the following happens. But you can probably guess what I'm going to draw. So you have Y, D, Y, D, T. Well, what I'm going to draw is what happens when this parabola reaches all the way down here. Okay. So I keep increasing H. I'm shifting the parabola down further. What happens when it ends up here, right? Because it will eventually if I choose H large enough. Okay. So now I have one root of this, uh, this quadratic equation. And I have one root. Um, it's a double root, right? Um, but it's only one root. And so this plot, I'm going to draw the solution. It's going to start to look a little bit different. Um, see if you can picture what it's going to look like before I even draw it. Okay. So here's T, here's Y of T. Say 2000 up here. Zeros down here. Okay, what is my equilibrium solution? Um, we can even say what it is, right? The vertex of the parabola is halfway between the roots. The x, the the y coordinate, I guess, in this case, <laughs> um, of the vertex is halfway between the roots. So this should be one thousand. And so at one thousand, I have a equilibrium solution. And that's the only equilibrium solution. What if I start with more than 1,000? dy dt is negative. Right? If I start with more than 1,000, dy dt is negative. If I start with less than 1,000 salmon, dy dt is also negative. So I've decreasing, decreasing. So here's my picture. Maybe if I start really close to 1,000, it might follow it for a little bit, but then it's going to decrease. Here's decreasing even faster. What if I start up here? Well, I'm decreasing, decreasing, but then I run into my equilibrium solution. Okay. Maybe if I start down here, something similar happens. Okay. Um, so um, that is interesting. Um, I just want to consider one more possibility. So what if we continue to increase H? So so I'll say if we increase H you know, too much, this is going to be a bad situation, but I'll still draw it. So we have our plot here. Our parabola is continuing to move downward, and here it's you know fallen off completely. So it's way down here. We have no roots. No real roots, at least. What is this picture going to look like? Okay. So we have T and we have Y of T. Well, um, <laughs> DYT is just always negative here. So we're going to be decreasing. We'll be decreasing the slowest still at 1,000, but still we're always going to be decreasing. So there are no equilibrium solutions, right? Because there are no roots here of, of the uh, parabola. So my solutions maybe just look like this. Okay. Um, and this is a sad situation, right? Because these represent the salmon population, these curves, the solution curves. And so here the salmon, uh, the salmon will die out. So this is what we want to avoid. Okay. Um, so 
what is um what is the uh the optimum harvesting rate going to be though well let's go back up here so it seems like the optimum harvesting rate should correspond to this third picture here because if the salmon, um, if the salmon population is exactly 1,000, then it will be able to sustain itself. However, I mean this is very precarious, right? So like technically, if we have 999 salmon, they're going to die out. Um, so you know, in real life, yeah, you don't want to have this kind of situation. You want a little bit more of a buffer here. Um, but yeah, so the max, the you know, optimal, mathematically optimal harvesting rate corresponds to this third picture that I drew here. So, um, so yeah, let's just say for the optimum um, harvesting rate, uh, we want. Okay, well, what do we want? We want this situation where the quadratic has only one root. So we want. Um, we want our expression for dy dt, let's write out that quadratic. We want this to have one root, to have exactly one root. When does a quadratic have one root? How can you tell? Well, we want the uh, discriminant to be, to be zero. That's how you tell. So the discriminant, recall, it's uh, b squared minus 4ac. It's a thing inside the quadratic formula um, when you solve the quadratic uh, equation. And we want this to be 0. Okay. So we want this to be 0. That will mean we have exactly one real root. Um, so let's just write out this quadratic. I'm aware this lecture is going a bit longer than usual, um, but almost done. So. Um, I'll do the quadratic term first, and then the linear term is just y, and then the constant term is minus h, okay? So um, we have b squared, that's just 1, right? 1 is b, so 1 minus 4 times a times c, and oh, I have 3 negatives, so I'm going to have a minus, and it's 4 times a, that's 4 times 1 over 2,000 times h, right? So... So I want this to be zero. That will correspond to this third picture here. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that means um, yeah, one is going to equal. So this is one over five hundred. So one is going to equal h over five hundred, which means h should be five hundred. So this is the optimum harvesting rate here. Five hundred salmon per year. If I do, if I harvest any more than um, 500 per year, then I end up in this territory, right? But 500 is the absolute maximum uh, that the population can sustain itself, right? Um, okay, um, so that's it for this lecture.